Hello and welcome to the Motion Masters, the Masters of Industrial Motion podcast. Uh, the world hums with the unseen symphony of gears and bearings within power transmission industry. But who are the conductors, the masterminds behind this hidden orchestra? Welcome to Motion Masters, where we pull back the curtain on the unseen heroes who keep the world in motion. I'm Jigger, your host. Join me as we unravel the mysteries of power transmission industry. Subscribe now and together, let's explore the unseen forces that keep the world, mo world in motion one year at a time. In our inaugural episode, we are honored to host one of the most important figure of the industry, Mr. Salim Hafer, uh, President of Eurotrans and Deputy General Manager at IMAC Gearbox. He's not just the head of a European powerhouse, but a visionary, a champion of progress, and a man with a wealth of knowledge to share. Today's episode is a deep dive into the European power transmission industry. We are going to ask several questions to Mr. Huffer to cover a range of topics from his personal experiences and roles to broader industry trends, challenges, and future outlooks. So welcome, Mr. Huffer. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you for the thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here, and it's a pleasure for me also to see that people are working on new format and a, a new way of uh, presenting our industry and our and, and our network. As Eurotrans, I think is the exact uh, same philosophy: is putting people together. So it's fantastic for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Before I ask you the first question, could you please give us a little bit of introduction of Eurotrans? Well, Eurotrans is a is a federation is a, that is putting together association from uh, different European countries. So uh, it was founded more than fifty years ago now, uh, as it was founded in sixty nine, and uh, and and now today we have uh, members from the UK, from France, from Italy, Belgium, Switzerland, uh, Turkey, and and Finland. So it's a very uh, uh, a broad range of members that we have. Uh, that we put together at the same table to discuss and address the different challenges of our industry. Let me start by asking, can you describe your journey to becoming the president of Eurotrans? Well, my, my journey was, uh, was first of all, full of uh, very interesting meetings, full of uh, very nice networking. And I think this, uh, this would be the main line of my experience in, in Eurotrans is to, to become president. You, you first need to play a very active role. It's all about meeting people. It's all about discussing with people, following trends and, and, and having and bringing patience for that because without this, this patient, uh, you cannot go uh, further in this. You already briefly mentioned, but I still wanted to know a little bit more about what does a typical day in your role involve? Well, as a federation, we don't have, as a federation, we don't have, I would say, typical days, but I would say that we have uh, long-term action, long-term roles, because the, the, the federation, as you said in the introduction, is, uh, is an umbrella that is getting together different associations. So I would say that the, the typical week or the typical month or the typical activities of a, a president of Eurotrans, but also the people that are working with me, is to get the people together first, is to follow different trends and to advocate for our industry uh, on a European uh, level, but also on a worldwide level as well. What are the primary objectives of um, and functions of Eurotrans? Well, the the, the Eurotrans, uh, which is now more than fifty years, is still keeping the same pillars from the beginning. So we are focusing on networking. So we are focusing on bringing uh, the people together, the associations together, but also the people that work in this industry together. That's the first pillar, which would be networking. Uh, the second one will be about uh, statistics. We try to follow the trends. We try to follow statistics. We try to follow the number and share this with our different members. And the third one will be training. So the Eurotrans is the federation of excellence. So we, we try to provide excellence through uh, the standards, but we also try to provide true excellence via sharing the knowledge to the different members, sharing this knowledge to different people uh, that are within the industry and in all different levels. We have trainings. Uh, for people working uh, in factories, but we also have a training for managers, but for engineers. So it's a very wide range of trainings that we propose within uh, the association. Is there any other additional support do you provide to the member companies? Well, we provide a lot of different support, and especially in this uh, in, in this period, we we provide a, a platform to be together. Uh, we provide the support. 
uh, by being the voice of the of the industry we have a lot of discussion with the lawmakers in Europe but we also have a lot of discussion with other associations worldwide to make sure we all go in the same line and to make sure we defend uh, let's say the vision first of our member but to also make sure that uh, we defend the interests of our industry in line with the other associations on different international level. Talking about the industry, uh, what are the current trends do you see in the European power transmission industry? The, the current trends, I would say that there is one trend that, that, that continues uh, for many years now and that is a top priority for our uh, industries is to focus on uh, sustainable practices to focus on the integration of advanced technologies like Internet of Things. Now we talk more and more about uh, artificial intelligence to integrate this well in the production side, but to also integrate this in the product that we are providing to customers at the end of the day. So I would say that we have two main uh, focus now in our industry, two main trends, I would say. The first one would be digitalization and the second one would be sustainability. And I think that... Uh, uh, we all agree that these two uh, goals and these two trends are working together uh, and they are uh, perfectly matching matching together. But we have another, another trend as well that is uh, coming out as a result of this is that we try to provide more efficient products. We try to provide uh, easier uh, easy maintenance for our product, but we also try to provide products that last longer in the time to reduce the carbon print at the end of the, the journey of the product. If the product is uh, have a longer life lifetime, it's uh, a lower uh, carbon footprint at the end of the day. There are so many um, uh, innovations uh, must be taking place in order to uh, go that far. Uh, how is innovation shaping the future of the industry? Uh, I think the innovation is uh, shaping the industry with the, with these new these new trends, we need now the customers for many years. They had this need, but they need to follow up their product. They need to know what was used in their product. So I think that the trustability is something that is playing a, a big role in innovation from the production side, but also from uh, end product side. So uh, by doing this innovation, we are reinventing our uh, our industry. Also with the enhancing all these uh, subjects for efficiency. We are also changing all the industry and we're also making innovation on all different uh, all different levels. And the last, uh, the last point I would say that is very important for our member is the, uh, this collaboration. So I think here right. we can come back more on the role of, of Eurotrans and how it work on, on uh, how it work on innovation. We try to uh, make this collaboration between members easier, to have this, this complementarity, to put all these forces together to bring uh, more excellence in innovation, to make the work of our member e easier, they communicate together, if they all do go together in the same uh, direction, at the end is the whole industry that is benefiting from this different innovation and trends. That, that's great. Um, again, I want to understand now the importance of the industry and how big the industry is. So can you elaborate on the economic significance of the industry, particularly in terms of job creation and uh, GDP contribution? Well, you said it at the, at the introduction, but today the, the power transmission industry in Europe represents more than 40 billion of turnover. So that's just a turnover made by our different member company within companies within uh, within Europe, which is it, which is it. Uh, a, a big contribution to the European GDP, but also in the same time, you have to imagine these all these uh, micro companies, uh, all these companies, all these foundries, all these steel companies that are also working behind our industry to provide us all the raw material, to provide us uh, all the different components used for our industry. So I would say that this is uh, 40 billion, but it's, it's much more important than that. And uh, we also have a very important uh, contribution because our parts are used in a lot of different sectors that range from the aerospace to the agriculture and the food industry, chemical plants and everything. So we are almost uh, everywhere. So we say that we are the, the hidden parts that are giving uh, motion and movement to the industry. So our role and our contribution to GDP is even more important than 40 billion. In the same time, uh, talking about uh, individual uh, employment, we now have more than 160 
uh, employees that are di directly working with our members. So if you add and put together the thousands of people that are working in, in, in the industry, that's a, that's a big part of the uh, European working force. And it's, a, and it's growing. Uh, I can say that our industry is hiring more and more people and in, on all different levels, huh? that's from engineer to operators, the, the, our sector is, is doing well and is constantly uh, recruiting on all, different, uh, on all different levels. That's great. But this must have come with the challenges as well. So how does the industry navigate economic challenges like recessions and uh, market fluctuations? Well, I think that uh, first we have uh, challenges shared with, the, uh, with all the, the counterparts of the European economy. Uh, this uh, geopolitical changes, uh, all these uh, changing laws with other, uh, with other counterparts, with other parts of the world. So there is a lot of challenge coming from, I would say, from a, 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 macro, a macro point of view. But out of this, we have our own challenges for the for the industry. As I said before, the industry is trying to go for um, a greener industry with having, let's say, lower uh, carbon uh, footprint. So that's a lot of change in our own production. So that's a big uh, that's a big challenge, a big investment for our members. So mm -hmm. that will be the first uh, challenge. The second challenge is to work on uh, strategic planning. It's, uh, you know, before we used to make plans on th two, three, four, five, ten years. But now, uh, if we know what's going to happen in six years, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big achievement. So the, the, the biggest, the second challenge, I would say, will be on the strategy planning. And the last one, and, uh, and I think that's where Eurotrans is trying to play a lot of roles, and it's a challenge shared with other industries, is a, a lack of workers. It's a... It's getting harder and harder to motivate young people to come and work in our industry. We have now uh, all the wave of people of very skilled engineers that are being retired, and we are struggling to put people in their uh, in their place. And that's why Eurotrust is playing a big role with all these trainings that we provide to our members. Uh, but we also try to work a lot with universities, try to promote all this work on standards, try to make this. Or transmission. Try to show actually. We don't try to make it more interesting, but we just try to show and clearly explain in all transparency that the power transmission is a very interesting field of work for young engineers. Uh, right. Just imagine that people working in our industry are working on projects on rovers that are going to be uh, in March. They are going. Uh, they are working on projects to solve the the water issues as we have member working providing gearboxes for the water treatment, but we also uh, work on uh, how to provide and how to produce more sustainable uh, raw materials. So we work in a lot of different fields, but the fact that we've been always sitting in the in the backside, I would say, now we try to put us back on the front side and, 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 and try to show to young people how our industry is interesting. And, uh, and I'm confident for the future, I'm confident that we will uh, overpass all these challenges because we are busy working on that. We're busy working on different solutions, but we will only be able to find a solution by being together. And that's why I think uh, there is a big role for association and federation like us in putting back people together on the same table and going in the same direction. This is uh, extraordinary work, what you're doing, because uh, young engineers, uh, they're always afraid when uh, in time of uncertainty, who is there to look after them? And uh, uh, what you mentioned, it just sounds like uh, helping them, you know, overcome that fear. So um, moving on. So let, let's go back to sustainability a little bit. Uh, how is the industry addressing environmental uh, sustainability? Uh, we do a lot of different changes uh, in, our, in our production, the way we produce, uh, the way we produce our products so to make uh, greener factories, we also try to be more and more careful about the the goods and components that we are using uh, within our own uh, within our own products. But in the same time, we are trying to address this by providing uh, products that are more efficient, that are more adapted to the expectation of the market, to uh, factories that are trying to reduce their carbon footprint. So we are playing on the on two sides of the board here. So we. We try to reduce our own carbon footprint when producing the gearbox, but we also gearbox or other different components. But also, we are helping our customers to reduce their own footprint. 
And what role does Eurotrons play in promoting green practices within the industry, especially those small manufacturers who have no means to cater to the environmental and sustainability practices? Uh, actually, we don't have small or big members. We 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 put everybody in the same uh, in the same level in our uh, in our industry, and I think that that's what's very that's what's very interesting with our industry that. Uh, small players, big players, they all sit at the same table. They all use the same standards. They all try to go in the same direction. And I think that's that's why uh, our industry is, is going toward excellency because we have very small members, uh, single-man companies that are dealing with the big projects and they cannot ignore these standards. They cannot uh, ignore all these different trends and we are always here to remind them. We are always here to share with them these different trends. So we'll make sure that no one is left at the end of the train. Very well said. Um, now I want to switch the gear a little bit uh, uh, to talk about the policies and the regulations. So what are the key regulatory challenges uh, industry is facing today? Well, the key regulation, I think the biggest one that we have now uh, Will be this uh, this carbon tax that are that is uh, slowly being being uh, implemented within uh, within Europe. I think it will change our industry because uh, most of the power that we see uh, used in our in our products will be impacted by this uh, this new law. So people have to reinvent their supply chain. They have to uh, reinvent the way they produce. Reinvent where they buy, how they buy. So um, uh, I think they will completely need to reinvent themselves with these new laws. And how do Eurotrans work with the European government to shape industry-friendly practices? Uh, well, we, we have a, a direct role there. We are very present with the, all our different uh, European associations that play uh, a, a direct role within their own countries, speaking with their own government, with their own ministries to present and to explain the different trends and needs of our industry. But ourselves, we play a very uh, important role within Europe as uh, we are always following the new laws, we are always bringing our idea, bringing our position uh, toward the different uh, decisions that are going to be taken. But we play also a role out of uh, Europe as uh, we are the direct counterpart of big associations in Asia, but also in, uh, in North America as well. We are talking about Asia, North America. I'm coming to international relations now. Uh, how does the European power transmission industry compare with the global counterparts? Well, how we uh, how how do we compare? I think we we try to do this with a lot of uh, with a lot of communication. We try to do this with the, uh, trying to put everybody on the same table. So we try to have a very active role in communication in uh, sitting with our. Uh, counterpart association discussing the the different challenges on one side, but uh, also uh, sitting together and, and and trying to define the trends for the future. What are the different uh, adjustments that should be done? Where our uh, industry is going? And uh, by taking all this information, by having all these discussions, we can come back to our members. We can come back to our law. Uh, makers and, and and tell them where the world of power transmission is going on an international level. Uh, what are the long term goals of Eurotrans? Well, the long term the the long term goals of, uh, of of our industry first of all is to keep our member together, is uh, to keep the discussion open, is to create more and more uh, events, is to make sure that uh, the industry still have skilled workers that European industries still have skilled workers so uh, it's obviously to uh, to work on more trainings to work on on uh, on more standards to work on more uh, being uh, together so that's from the the different long term for the the euro transociation itself and uh, and also we have uh, other uh, long term goals with that we share with our industry uh, members is to continue innovation, continue to develop uh, what is making the excellence of, of the European power transmission is the cutting edge technology, a more efficient products, a, a greener production. So it's to bring everybody on the same level, but always do more, always do better. So I think we still have a lot of work. So the, the agenda of uh, Eurotrans will be uh, full for the uh, many, uh, many more years to come. I want to talk a little bit about the challenges now. Uh, COVID uh, 19 pandemic 
shaken up the whole world, uh, how a Eurotrans is preparing for the uncertainties and challenges in the future, if they may come, and the opportunities in the industry. Well, first of all, uh, COVID obviously was a challenge for everybody, but I think that our uh, our industry has shown a, a, a great resilience and a great adaptivity for that. And the association itself, we really quickly moved the digital world. We completely reorganized the meetings, uh, moving toward digital meetings, which actually brought us a lot of different advantages. And now we are slowly, uh, we came back to the normal, but we, we, we try to keep this as an advantage to be more flexible, uh, to be on different platforms. Uh, so that would be the first uh, challenge that we had to address and uh, that we had to adapt in the last, uh, in the last uh, few years. As per the different, uh, in your question, different challenges that we'll have in the future, and, uh, and I will repeat myself again, but the main challenge is uh, having a skilled workers, is having people, because it's a, it's a mechanical world, it's a mechanical sector in which we are working, but behind all these gears and, and bearings is a very talented engineers, is a, a skilled workers, is passionate people that work on these uh, standards, on this innovation, and uh, so I think this will be the biggest uh, challenge that we uh, will have to face, and uh, for which we are uh, we are being uh, we are being more and more prepared now with all the action that we uh, that we are doing. The last point that we'd like to 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 add also is uh, uh, we need to be together, we need to sit together, we need to meet together. I think that's the biggest challenge that we'll uh, have to face in the future as the world is uh, being uh, more and more going into opposition, more and more going in, into different sides. I think this warrior trans have to, to play an important role in, in, uh, in bringing people together as we used to do for many years is to, uh, we, we speak the same language, right? mechanical engineering, the language of innovation, language of, of trends, the language of, of standards. And I think this is the right. main message that we are we are carrying on. So we also continue to support uh, all these different uh, discussions, the different events that are made for an industry. And I think that's why it's a, it's a big pleasure for me uh, to be here with you uh, to have this uh, this open discussion on on our industry and our trends. And I think we need to support more and more such kind of, uh, of action and initiatives. Talking about events, by the way, uh, let me ask you, are you um, uh, able to join Bearing and Power Transmission uh, event uh, organized by Bearing News and Motion and Drives magazine? Uh, well, well we, we, we were there last year. We were there last year as well. And uh, uh, I actually did the opening speech of this event. It was a great pleasure for me to uh, to somehow play uh, the match at home and having people from so many different countries meeting in the same place. And, uh, and for next year, we will be there as well. Uh, right. from the organization and also from a, uh, from a company point of view we will be we will be there because as I said in the previous uh, answer to your question is it's important to be together to sit together to discuss together to network together uh, and that's how we will keep this uh, this excellence by putting uh, people together so well we will be there yeah okay uh, you mentioned uh, briefly about the engineers and the talent uh, you need in the industry, uh, and that could be the potential challenge in the future. Uh, but those engineers come also from the diverse background. What initiatives has Eurotrans taken to promote diversity and inclusion within the industry? Eurotrans by itself is diversity because it's a, okay. it's a federation that is putting together uh, association from several different countries so we now have uh, associations from uh, from Germany from France from Turkey from uh, from the UK from Switzerland from Finland from uh, from Italy as well that are sitting together discussing together and uh, and trying to find solution together and trying to see how this diversity of culture and realities can help us to uh, address the different challenges of the industry. And uh, speaking about the diversity and inclusion, I think that that, that would be the best, uh, I'll be the best illustration for that as I have a, a French and Moroccan background. I'm uh, working in a Turkish company, but I'm leading now a European association. And, and I think that, uh, that uh, what I represent is also represented in, in most of our members. And uh, it's always very interesting to, to have meetings with our different members and uh, we very quickly 
uh, get into discussion with people from uh, 5, 10, 20, 30, 30 different countries and sitting at the same table is very interesting. And I think that the diversity is uh, is also a, a solution. Mixity is also a solution for for future. And all our members are open to engineers coming from all over the world, uh, whatever their the cultural background or whatever the professional background. The industry is uh, is opening it uh, it uh, its its hand to uh, talents from all over the world. Actually, yeah. This diverse background also come with a lot of requirements, demands, and needs. How do you ensure that the needs of all member countries are fairly represented? Well, the, as I said before, Eurotrans is a, is, a, is a federation. So it's a federation that is having and sitting with the association members. So that's what is very nice with this federation is that uh, we sit with the uh, represented, high represent of this association that are already sitting with their own members and uh, trying to analyze, trying to focus on the main challenges of their own market, the main challenge of their own members, and then they all come together with, I would say, a short list of their priorities. So we 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 are already sitting there with the top priorities. So when we sit in a Eurotrans meeting, we have people that come back, come to us, I would say, with their own priorities. So uh, we make sure that uh, we listen to all of this and we make sure we come solutions on the European level because what's happening is that uh, these members when they come with their needs and their demand it means that they they did manage to to solve them maybe on the national level or it means that these companies are playing on international level so they need to have uh, answers from 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 a federation that is addressing uh, international challenges that is uh, following international trends it don't mean that the association is not able to answer them but but it means that uh, we give an ever better answer when we are sitting all together. What has been your most significant challenge as a president? Well, I don't, I don't think that I had any, any, any challenge. Maybe this is a, a, a way of thinking, but I think that all challenges are chances to, for personal development, for association development. So I've been, uh, I've been very lucky to travel a lot with the association, uh, meeting with people from a lot of different countries, uh, throwing bridges uh, toward different uh, different cultures, so I don't see any kind of challenges. I I only see chances. I only see uh, opportunities of meeting with the meeting with new peoples, uh, having ideas on different point of views, and following the trends from different perspectives. Uh, because many things are happening in the world, but uh, it's always interesting to uh, to listen on the point. Of, the point of view of different people, so it gives you different perspectives. So it makes it uh, not easier, but uh, it makes it, uh, I mean, it makes the solution only better because you have different point of view, different perspectives. So I think I don't see any kind of, um, of challenges. I only see, uh, I only see opportunities. Uh, so it's, it's, it's all positive for me. It's only positive for me because association people is a very, it's a very uh, rare uh, spicy now. Uh, we uh, uh, we are struggling to find people to work with us. Uh, we are struggling to find people that want to represent, that want to uh, to uh, give of their time and energy to represent the industry. So that will be the the biggest challenge to find people to represent the industry. The industry. But from the same time, uh, when you sit at the table with these people, they are all table. They are all people that know the industry, the all people that have big experience, that have a, a incredible international background and different cultural backgrounds. So it's always very interesting. Whoever end up at the Eurotrans table uh, already did a lot of uh, amazing job within their own industry, their own company and their own association. So I think it's, a, it's only a chance, another challenge for me to be sitting at this table here. Yeah. Again, going back to the engineers and the aspirants, so what advice would you give to young professionals aspiring to work in the industry? Well, the, the, the main advice that I will give to young professionals is to be, to be curious, you know, to be curious because uh, you're always uh, as, good as, you're, uh, as good as you're curious. You need to be interested. You need to understand uh, the different fields, the different sectors where we are, uh, where we are working. And this is how 
you can bring added value to your company. This is how the company can bring you added value. I mean, if you you run after knowledge, if you run after opportunities, you will only create opportunity for your company, but for yourself at the end of the at the end of the day. I always give this uh, this example. I've been very lucky to travel to more than seventy more than seventy countries with the with my uh, with my personal level and professional experience, and it's all because I've been. Uh, believing in the job that I do, and I've been believing in different uh, opportunities, and uh, what what was a job opportunity at the beginning end up uh, being a fantastic personal opportunity for myself, my personal development. So stay curious, always try to to learn, uh, and always remember that you you are very lucky to uh, to work in the world of power transmission because it's. Uh, it's doors for an infinite world, and, uh, and our industry will continue to grow and will always be focusing on new subjects, new trends. So you are sure that uh, you will develop yourself, develop your knowledge, and uh, work on very interesting uh, subjects yeah, and projects. Uh, we hope that the viewers are taking note of what you just said. Very important advice. Since this is the first episode, I wanted to ask you, what advice do you have for uh, a podcast like this? which is first of its kind in the industry or one of its kind in the industry. Do you have any advice, suggestions, guidance for us as we uh, take this podcast forward? Well, uh, for me, it was a very nice experience. It was a very, uh, very dynamic. Uh, I think that the main advice that I can have is to continue on the same path and continue to, to bring people together from uh, uh, different sides and corners of our, of our industry. So, I think it's a very nice job that uh, you are doing here, uh, trying to uh, bring some more uh, digital aspect to our industry. Uh, so it's fantastic just continue on the same line. Last question. Um, what excites you the most about the future of the European power transmission industry? Or let's say not just European, but worldwide, overall industry. Well, what's, uh, what's, what's really exciting is that our members uh, and our uh, companies continue to develop Constantly, they constantly reinvent themselves. They constantly add new version to their products. They constantly change their world of production. So it's it's going very fast. You know, it's a it's a sector that is not staying at its place. It's always running after new things, and it's very interesting. You know, I'm always I'm always exciting to visit, excited to visit uh, factory from our members. You know, to see how they reinvent reinvent their production with all these new subjects, sustainability. Uh, digitalization it's always uh, always impressive to see how they change everything in only a few years so it's only exciting to imagine how it's going to be in 5, 10, 20 years so that's the first uh, exciting part the, the the other exciting part is the, the international perspective of this sector uh, we have members uh, of the European Port Transmission Industry that are present in 60, uh, 70 different countries so it's, it's it's very nice to see how our members are are adapting to different markets, how they are bringing solutions to the different realities of all these countries where they are working. So it's always exact, exciting to see the adaptability of these uh, these member companies. Uh, so well, I'm, I'm very excited for for the future. That's that's what I can say. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Alfred, for your time. This brings us to the end of this podcast, episode one. Uh, we hope uh, we will catch up with you very soon. And uh, at latest, we will see you at the event in Istanbul. Well, thank you. And uh, well, see you in uh, see you very soon in Istanbul. Thank you for your time as well. And uh, and one more time, thank you for bringing uh, people of the industry together.